this at another ITEFL Poland event. Yes, great to see you guys. Please uh, write something about yourself, where you where you are from, where you teach. We've got India, Romania, Mexico, Egypt, Spain, um, also Oman, Brazil, Algeria. Fantastic. Tunisia. Okay. So many fantastic people here. That's great to see. It's a great pleasure um, to work for you guys. Naita for Poland has this great privilege to serve teachers in Poland and um, around the world. It's been a great uh, two years since we started um, doing the Naita for Poland webinars. And we must say, it has been a very fruitful, very, very fruitful time. Um, before we uh, invite you today to uh, the webinar by Sylvie Blakova about pronunciation, I would like to um, bring to your attention um, some of the ITA for Poland activity. ITA for Poland is an association of teachers of English as a foreign language in Poland. And um, we mostly serve um, Polish teachers. However, we are very glad uh, uh, to share our um, skills, our knowledge, our opportunities uh, with teachers of English from all over the world. Um, of course, that would be ideally to uh, meet in a person, face to face, like we usually did uh, in September on the um, conference of ITAFL Poland. ITAFL Poland conference was one of the biggest conferences in ELT world in um, continental Europe, right? So whenever it is possible, of course, we will get back to, um, to this uh, great event. And we hope, to, mm, we hope to see you there, right? But before that happens, uh, we um, invite you to our webinars. And um, so far, we had plenty of um, webinars. I would like to uh, show you our um, website uh, in case you don't, uh, don't know it. Uh, this is itafo.org.pl. And as you can see, a lot of uh, things are going on here. And if you click at events and then webinars, you will see that we've got plenty of things uh, to uh, show to you. And, um, of course, more and more uh, to come, more and more to come. Um, just in a week's time, we will have uh, the pleasure to invite you to um, a webinar by ITF of Poland and Hugh Della. And this webinar, as you can see, it's still early um, version of the invitation. Uh, this will be a webinar, which will be on 7th December, which will be about uh, smooth sailing through the sea of words. So um, please join us at our uh, web page. And soon there will be this information about the next webinar published. We've got lots and lots of um, ideas. And we are so happy that you come um, here to uh, to um, to share this this uh, online um, continuous uh, development um, program. Today we've got um, Sylvie Dolakova with us, and Sylvie um, just a um, few weeks before, few week, few, three a uh, few weeks ago, 
um, did a wonderful webinar um, for ITO for Poland. And this uh, webinar was about teaching uh, young uh, people in general. Today, Sylvie will focus on pronunciation tips and tricks for young learners. Sylvie is a great person. She's a very fruitful um, trainer. She's an enthusiastic teacher. Uh, she focuses on teaching English to children aged 4 to 15 years old. And she's got more than 25 years of experience in it. Um, her hobby horse is teaching English through arts and stories, books. She publishes a lot uh, about um, games and story-based teaching. And uh, obviously, you will meet her on uh, Facebook. Um, it's a great, uh, great uh, opportunity also um, also to talk to Sylvie about um, how to teach pronunciation. Um, probably many people uh, would think that pronunciation um, is not uh, the big thing for young, um, for young students, for young learners. They will simply pick up the things on the go. Um, but is it so? Sylvie, uh, if, you, if you could join us with your microphone, that would be fantastic. And I was just um, telling everybody about, about you and about your uh, previous fantastic webinar. Um, I was listening yeah. carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Martin, uh, for that. I, I, I know that, that, that you are absolutely a very busy person right now, especially that uh, uh, online learning, online teaching is uh, on the rise. Could you please tell us um, why pronunciation for kids? Shouldn't they simply pick up uh, the proper sounds, the proper rhythm, uh, the proper melody of, of the language just from what we um, say to them? Why should we focus on pronunciation to kids? Yeah, definitely they can adopt the pronunciation of their teacher. But sometimes uh, the accent is very uh, strong of the teachers or sometimes they are not able to imitate the sounds properly. So that's why I was thinking about some techniques, how to help them to, pro uh, to produce the proper sound. And as you can see, with my strong Slavonic accent, it's very daring to speak about pronunciation. But I'm really glad that I studied uh, pronunciation a lot to improve the initial stage, which was uh, very difficult to understand. So uh, I will share some techniques that really help and we will solve uh, the problems or the questions whether to use uh, phonetic transcription or not, uh, with how old children and so on and so forth. Thanks a lot, Sylvie. And of course, um, hello, Lucina. Great to, great to see you. Um, so um, do you think we could start? Sylvie? Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay, so thank you very much and thank you IATFL Poland for uh, giving me this space. I feel very honored to be able to share my pronunciation tips and tricks for young learners. But uh, honestly, it works even with uh, the adults or teenagers, so whoever can participate or uh, whoever can benefit from my pronunciation tips and tricks. So first of all, I would like you to test your English. Yeah, but first. Okay. Why is pronunciation important for learners? Let's speak about that. First, to be understood and to understand each other. Because if they are not able to share the same pronunciation, 
they wouldn't be able what the other person is talking about. Why is the pronunciation important for the teacher? The same reason to be understood, to understand their learners, but also to be a good model for uh, their students, to provide efficient pronunciation techniques so that the learners know how to produce the sound, how to imitate uh, uh, the intonation and stress pattern, and so on. Uh, they have to offer enjoyable, effective and beneficial exercises. Actually, we have to entertain our students. So, I'm going to test you. Are you a good model for your students? So now, uh, I'm not going to hear you, so you can shout even loudly. Can you pronounce this word correctly? Oh, sorry. Do you say hello? Mm, that's not very good. Didn't I tell you, you should be a good model of pronunciation? So, it must be a bit exaggerated. So now I'm going to show you. If you have some space, I will move my studio. Can you see me? Oh, okay. So if you place your arms in front of you, you swing them backwards and you say hello, it will be much better. Just try. Hello. Wasn't it better? So once again, hello. It goes out quite naturally because this movement with your arms backwards doesn't allow you to pro pronounce O. Yeah, hello, 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 hello. So you have to exaggerate a bit. Okay, so now you know how to start. Is it your very first word that you use with your young learners? I guess so. How about this word? There or there? It's half and half. Half of the population says there, which is not correct. Uh, the correct sound is there, like look over there. Yeah? But the word is here from a very different reason. It's the initial sound. The. How to teach this one? It's not in many languages. So, uh, one methodology specialist told me, that's easy, just put your finger in front of your mouth and lick it. This, that, thank you. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, I will show you this. Now, please, uh, your imagination must run in full swing. This is a lollipop. It's not a plastic uh, spoon. It's a lollipop. Sorry, I couldn't find any in our house. So, we use a lollipop for practicing this sound. A technical remark. You have to unpack your lollipop. You have to start it a bit because if it is dry, it doesn't work. And then you just lick this, that, Father, mother, thank you. Does it work? Definitely it does. So next time, try with a lollipop. Okay, now we can see three words. They are here to practice this sound. Car, ravat. Very. Especially French teachers have troubles with this sound because their r is quite rumbling. It's the same in our language uh, in Czech. But we have to um, put the tip of the tongue out of order. It cannot vibrate. So the little lollipop stick 
can do the work. Yeah. So if you insert the lollipop stick under your tongue, then the sound is perfect. So this is another trick. Okay, next one. I met a lot of teachers who have no idea how to pronounce the first word. It's oven. The other one is owl. Next word is wet. And the last one, vet. So you probably guess that it's about that w sound. W. How to uh, teach this sound? A bit of physical violence. You have to be very close and you ask them to count. One, two, three. Yeah. So can you count again? V uh, one, two, three. Yeah. So when they want to say v one, two, three, you just gently press the tips of their mouth together. Yeah. Can you try it at home? Tell me the word van, but press your mouth. Van. Ah, that works. Yeah, that was perfect. I could hear it here. Okay, so that's another trick. Uh, miss, we've won the baseball match. We are the champions. Well, maybe in sports, but how about the pronunciation? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. We are the champions. And I have to praise them. Okay, so that was another sound. Let's continue. Finger or finger? Singer or singer? Singing or sinking? Okay, so the first one is finger because it's the word and in the middle it's that little g sound. If you divide the word singer into sing and er, suffix er, then you pronounce the same way, singer, singer. And that's why we also have singing. How to teach this one? It's really difficult. So I will show you, but we have to go into a hangar. A hangar is here. It's 10 centimeters at the edge of your uh, chair. You put your knees a bit apart because you have just sat on a motorcycle. So grab the bars and be careful. There is a curve behind the gate of the uh, hangar. Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, have you managed? So, I believe it must have been a beautiful sound because when you think about a motorcycle and the long continuous sound, then you cannot make sink, ink, 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 ink. Only if you are sitting on Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson is not very good for practicing this activity, yeah? Okay, so let's go a bit further. Man, men. Bag, bag. Set, set. So what is the difference? It's that wide ah sound. So you can play the jungle in your classroom. Imagine you are a monkey, a very hungry monkey and a greedy monkey. You have just found a mango, a huge mango, but you don't want to share. It's your mango. So let's swallow it in one go. Are you ready? Have you got your mango in front of you? Let's go. Mango. <laughs> okay, that was a beautiful sound, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, so you can practice with monkeys because it's in the middle of the word. 
I used to teach them, you are at the doctor's, you say, ah, but then you change your mind and you say, ah, 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 ah. No, it doesn't work because it's at the beginning of the word. But in the middle of the word, mango works perfectly. Okay, let's go a bit further. Now, I would like to see the stress in these words. So the first one is gorilla. And as I want to see the stress, I usually ask my students to box into the air. So it's gorilla. And I can easily see if they feel the stress on the right spot. Next one. Kangaroo. Fantastic. Next, giraffe. And the last one, most difficult for Czech students, canary. Mm, quite unusual. <laughs> okay, so we will talk about stress as well. And next picture. So, uh, your test is over. You did it right. You can bring your index. I will give you some uh, assessment if you want to. And we are talking about individual sounds or phonemes. Phonetic transcription, yes or no? I was facing this question all my teacher's career, which was 15 years of teaching practice with children and a lot more with the adults. So what are the benefits of a phonetic transcription? It enables precise imitation of the sound. It provides confidence in speaking production. If I know I pro pronounce it uh, correctly according to the symbols, then I can say this word. It's easier for decoding in many words. Unfortunately, children have to learn both sound and the written form. And some teachers say it's too complicated to teach. Mm? No, I'm sorry to say it's not. It's quite easy. I will show you. But there are two more remarks and the third one, which is the most important. We have to start very early. It's uh, very strange to think about phonetic transcription and little children. But the earlier we start, the better results we get. So, for example, kindergarten children are able to distinguish phonetic symbols. I will show you. But everything must be done in oral way which means not any production on a piece of paper, not any transcription in their vocabulary books and so on. So only teaching them to be able to read the word. Okay, I will show you the way. A few years ago, I came across this worksheet you can see it's a primary pronunciation box by Oxford University Press. And there was a fantastic idea to teach uh, vowel sounds by the names of colors. I had never realized before that in 11 names, the most common names of colors, there are 11 different vowel sounds. So, for example, gray, day, green, tree, yellow, yo-yo. Oh, that's easy. That's pretty cool. That's what I thought. Unfortunately, before children can do this one, this activity, they have to learn how to read first. And I think that's uh, quite late. 
So I was thinking how to transfer this activity to even younger children. And I invented this way. Oh, it's a pity that this uh, platform doesn't allow you to see all my steps because you could see only the two mats, the pink and the blue, and the two pictures, fish, pink, shoe, blue. So that's how I would explain the little children if they look at the picture of a fish and say the color, what sound is the same in both words? Fish, pink, shoe, blue. Which sounds are the same? So we would agree that I uh, is in both fish and pink. U is in blue and shoe. But that's easy. Then I offer them the black and white picture cards and they have to decide where to put them. So, which, tip, king, ship, pick. These go to the pink mat. Whereas scooter, moon, broom, balloon, spoon go onto the blue mat. And some teachers say, you are a great supporter of the idea of not reading and writing very early. So why do you offer them these letters? And I usually say, these are not letters. And to the children, I say, oh, these are not letters. They are the pictures of the sounds that you can hear the same. So it's not any letter, it's the picture of the sound E and U. And I was thinking even further than 11 colors as in primary pronunciation box. Oh, it's a pity you won't be able to see. <laughs> I would show you which words go where. So fish, pink, shoe, blue. Dress, red, leaf, green, dog, orange, black, hat, uh, purple, worm, white, bike, gray, snake, yellow, soap, brown, mouse, uh, timber wolf. This is a very special color. It's called timber wolf. We usually shorten it to wolf. It's wolf gray, wolf hook, magenta, banana, plum, cup, auburn, horse, pear green, chair, sienna, ear, khaki, car, Turquoise, coin, azure, tourist. So in half a year, I would be able to teach all 20 vowel sounds to the children. And how many vowel sounds are in your mother tongue? If I count how many there are in Czech, we would come to 14. So how can we imitate 20 English vowel sounds with only 14 Czech sounds? That's why I need some symbols to indicate the difference in pronunciation. And phonetic transcription provides me a very good platform for distinguishing the individual sounds. Isn't that easy? What do you think? Uh, is it possible to get this chart? If you click with your camera, you will see it. Uh, 
actually this is taken all with uh, from my um material called pronunciation basket and uh, in sh in a short while you will see um why pronunciation basket so i will develop this idea a little bit uh, okay so these are the pictures or the picture cards that i usually use with little children or with any uh, student of english because these are just the common words and If you can see me in a small window, I will show you this little paper basket. And if there are women, what is our best hobby? Shopping. That's what usually men think, but I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so uh, I really like going shopping for certain sounds. So, with this basket, I would hunt for all the words containing O sound. For example, dog, sock, clock. With this basket, I would hunt for desk, dress. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Blue, shoe, spoon, moon, school yellow, hello, <laughs> bone, and so many other words. So it's a very enjoyable activity with these little baskets. So that's why I named my materials for teaching pronunciation, pronunciation basket. Okay. If I have the set of little cards I can play a communicative activity with this little chart. It's for um, very young children. With older, I would use the, the coordinators one, two, three, A, B. But I don't want them to read uh, earlier than they should. So this one contains colors. Imagine we have a set of pictures oh sorry we play in a pair sitting facing each other each of us has a chart and a set of cards let's say 10 not more uh, there is an obstacle between the two of us so that we can't see the other chart. One player places his or her cards onto the chart. The other player uh, gives coordinators and places his or her cards in the certain squares. For example, yellow and blue. I've got a moon there, so I say moon. They take the moon and place it in the section of a yellow and blue uh, line and column. Then they might ask, green and blue, and I say cow. They have to take the picture of cow and place it under the moon. And they continue until the whole chart is covered with the corresponding pictures. Then they remove the obstacle, compare the two charts, and if it is correct, they can praise each other. So this was the pronunciation activity, but also it was the basis for the future dialogue, because they are communicated, uh, communicating, they are tr transferring the information in a form of a question, coordinators, and the answer the name of the picture I've got there. So I teach them pronunciation in that communicative uh, way. I hope you like it as well. With those pictures, I can play many more activities. For example, if I have a few sets of the same cards, I can deal uh, into the groups and then 
I say one wear it socks. Whoever has socks have to raise the picture and shout it out. If they forget one of those, sorry, no point for their group. Yeah. So it must be done the same way. Shout and raise. Yeah. Okay, it's sound discrimination, distinguishing the sound. Another one, do you know the game Chinese Whisper? So usually there are two teams of players. Uh, a word is sent from the back of the rows and they transfer the word whispering to uh, each other's ear until it comes to the last players who run and write the word on the board. Mm, no, I don't want to wait until they are able to write. I want to play as soon as they can repeat a word, which is much more easier. So I would use another set. I would send one word and they would grab the corresponding card on the other side of the room. And that's easy. Okay. Let's go a bit further. And uh, I would like to remind you of that worksheet by uh, Oxford University Press that the reading children do their task. They have to read and think which color they should use. My version is much easier. These are just pictures and the children uh, consider which color they should color in those pictures. So, for example, fox, can you type in your chat box which color they would use to color in the fox? Orange, okay, orange. Pram. Pram. Black. Black, yes, that is a correct answer. Black, pram, black, ah. Mice. Mice. Excellent, white. Dress. Red, fantastic. Worm. Purple, excellent. And jeans. Jeans. Green, fantastic. Okay, the other one. Look at the kite. The kite would stay white, but children love the action. So they noticed there are ribbons and bows on the tail of the kite. So ribbons were pink and bows were yellow. Isn't that clever? And the rain was gray, but the clouds were brown. So they can even think about more sounds within the picture. Okay, so let's move a bit. And this activity is perfect for any age group. Uh, I call them phony mittens. These are actually the huge mittens. I'm sorry, I forgot to take them out of my box. So these are the mittens that fit the hands. And they have the symbol on both sides so that I can see them and the viewers can see my symbols. And then the teacher says words that have those contrasting sounds and the learners just raise a corresponding mitten. So if you look at the bottom pair of mittens, t -a -d, isn't that fantastic to practice the pronunciation of past uh, suffixes, ed? So you just say a verb. They have to say it quietly um, in their minds and raise the corresponding mitten. For example, uh, listened. What would you raise? Hmm. 
listened d, d, d. listened yeah. asked yeah this one is t sound okay Whew. let's practice a bit more <laughs> Okay, uh, the same uh, pair of mittens with s and z sound sounds for uh, the third person singular. Yeah, asks, um, flies, and so on. Yeah. Let's speak about rhythm. Rhythm is a very important feature in speech because it divides speech into comprehensible chunks. It, it distinguishes the number of syllables, which is very difficult, especially for dyslexic students. And especially before they are seven years old, because it will help them uh, to perceive words in a more clear way. Later, it serves for recognition of words. So, for example, if they clap the syllables and they have more claps, they expect longer groups of letters. So, how to practice the rhythm? Of course, clapping whatever they can. So, here you can see. Unfortunately, I was uh, told that you won't be able to hear the chant. So I'm going to show you the chant in pictures. Strawberry, cherry, raspberry, plum, blackberry, apple, pear, yum, yum. So this is a little uh, chant that we let the children listen. Then they are offered a set of these cards and they make the text in front of them. Uh, would you be able to read the chant? Of course, uh, by the pictures, don't look at these words. <laughs> Strawberry, cherry, raspberry, plum, blackberry, apple and pear, yum, yum. So it's easy, it's rhythmical and children can remember that in a while. What do we do afterwards? Then we offer them mats, large mats with uh, pictures of fruit that indicate the number of syllables. For example, plum, one syllable, strawberry, two syllables, raspberry, three syllables. And we ask the children to place the pictures from the chant onto the mats, according to the number of syllables. It looks like this. You've got it all in once. I usually click on the arrows and one after another appears, not in this system, never mind. Uh, do you remember the chant? Strawberry, cherry, raspberry, plum, blackberry, apple, and pear, yum, yum. So you can see the whole chant. <coughs> then I offer them these cards. They are rhythmic cards and they symbolize the number of syllables. One syllable words, two syllable words, and three syllable words. Uh, they match them to the corresponding little cards. And then they are ready to play the dominoes. Look at that. These are the dominoes cards. And on the right hand side, each card has a number of syllables. So they search for a word that fits with this number. For example, two syllables, apple lemon, orange, strawberry, one syllable, pear, peach, uh, grapes, three syllables, raspberry, 
blackberry, banana. Why is this syllabication so important for the learners? Because they make a platform for later stress pattern recognition. So <coughs> we practice a bit more, for example, in the shape of uh, these dominoes. Again, they have to match the corresponding card of the dominoes to the corresponding name of the animal, according to the number of syllables. I can tell you, it's sometimes difficult even for the teachers. Uh, I often uh, conduct workshops for teachers and they have troubles distinguishing the syllables in English. So they should practice with children more to get them used to that ability. Okay, let's have a look at stress. Stress provides comprehension in a stream of speech. So uh, stress makes you sure that you won't lose the most important part of a sentence or of a speech. Stress equals meaning. So that's why nouns are stressed, adjectives are stressed, full verbs are stressed. Unstressed words are usually grammar words or linking words, auxiliaries, prepositions, pronouns, articles. Everything what is stressed is important. That's what children should remember. Let's have a look how to practice that. So again, we can use the game of dominoes. These are the names of animals. And maybe you can see chimpanzee, rhinoceros, kangaroo, tarantula, and so on and so forth. So children can uh, get used to those uh, names of the animals. Then I use these little mats with a stress pattern. I made a lot of those, brought them to the workshop for teachers, and then I realized when I turn them upside down, they can be pretty different. I will show you. This stress pattern and this is quite different. So that's why I asked my illustrator to make those little symbols, a little house. Oh, sorry, these are just trees. The little trees and the clouds, so that everybody knows from which side they should look at them. And then I offer them those little strips with text and ask them to match them to the corresponding mats. Do you think it's easy? No? <laughs> well, I would say uh, these are a bit easy, but look at these. <sighs> Starts to be quite difficult, isn't it? Don't you know him? Go to the gym. Buy bread and fruit. She wants to ask. I can't believe you. Ben is a doctor. Well, if you point with your finger while saying these phrases or sentences, it's really very helpful. But also it um, can be practiced and it should be practiced. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if you can see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so everything at once. This is a perfect activity 
to focus uh, their attention on stress words. So we can have a sentence, cats catch mice. All three words are stressed and we can offer them the mat showing three stressed uh, words or patterns, big dots. Then we can expand the sentence, the cats catch mice. The cats catch the mice. The cats can catch the mice. The cats will be catching the mice. Have you noticed all the sentences were of the sa same time length? They all took the same time, which means that those not so important words, grammar words, linking words, and so on, must be squeezed between the stressed words. Articles, the cats. We don't say the cats. We say the cats catch the mice. The cats can catch the mice. Uh, this activity shows us which words are stressed in a very easy way. Uh, okay, let's have a look here. So here are the ways how you can practice with little learners the feeling of stressed words. How do you get to school? We go to school by bus. How do you get to school? We go to school by train. How do you get to school? We go to school by bike. How do you get to school? I go to school on foot. Really? Yes, I do. Now, please try with me the school chant and help with both hands clicking your fingers. Can you click your fingers? If it doesn't work, I know it's not very hygienic. Just lick the fingers and it will work. Yeah? Okay. Ready, steady, go. Go to school. Learn some facts. Count your sums. Meet your friends. Draw a line. Stop these squares. Learn a rhyme. Put up chairs. Make some art, cut out shapes, read some lines, learn new words, quickly move, clean your place, take your bag, run downstairs, and you can leave the classroom with your bag bags on their backs. Okay. I hope you clicked with your camera to get those two chants, and there are a few more. Okay, let's try this one, yeah? In my room on the floor, there's a rug and a chair. On the wall by the shelf, there's a poster with a bear. Near the window, there's a desk where I sit and where I work. In the cupboard, there are plates and a spoon, knife and fork. Okay, so this is even for those little children who can't read yet, because if they can see the pictures, it's quite enough for them to reproduce the chant. That's why I always use the sets of little pictures that they place in proper uh, order to be able to retell or, or uh, reproduce the little chant. And it's very enjoyable for them if they can make their own chant. Unfortunately, maybe you've noticed there is one stressed word that has no picture. It's the word work. It's not in my database, in my bank of words. In my set, there are 444 words drawn by the illustrator, but there is no word for work. Oh, sorry, no picture for work. So I have to indicate oh, there is one which has no picture, but you mustn't forget it. Yeah, And they usually don't. So it's really very good if they can complete the chant on their own. And with older ones, 
we can replace the pictures with little boxes and they either write the trust words or they can draw a picture. Okay, let's have a look at ah, rhyming. Rhyming is a very positive activity because it concentrates on similar sounds and also the rhythm. Usually uh, the chants rhyme or uh, poems, rhymes and so on. The regular rhythm and the similar sounds at the end of verses make the learners remember text in sentences in a much easier way. They can learn or imitate the language because they can remember it easily. If you provide them with a tune, then you have the bonus because using songs creates a positive atmosphere. It makes good mood in your learners and they can overcome a lot of difficult moments while singing. Believe me, I know a lot about that. When you don't feel psychologically strong, then start singing. It really helps. Because I know nobody who could sing and frown at the same time. Do you know why? Because frowning involves more uh, face muscles than smiling. Smiling is easier to form on your face. That's why the children, and not only the children, all people, when they sing, they start smiling unconsciously. Yeah, And if you use it a lot, then the atmosphere in your group will improve dramatically. Okay, so let's have a look at rhyming activities. Oh, it's a pity you can't see the pictures one by one. So there were uh, 12 pictures with uh, picture words, and then you can see rhyming riddles. What do you read that rhymes with cook? Book. What do you write with that rhymes with hen? Pen. Where can you see countries that rhyme with cap, map, and so on? So you are searching for a word that rhymes with a question or the last word of the question. We can use these riddles in many ways. For example, you read the riddles and the learners place the picture cards in a line. Then you read them again in the same order and they shout which word they placed. Uh, this is very good for developing listening skills and decoding the language. Then you can uh, have them match the card with the question and the answer. But my, my most favorite activity with these riddles is a mingling activity. Uh, try to imagine a group of learners are given those question cards. They each get a strip or a card with a text. And if they don't know the answer, I usually uh, distribute the small cards on one desk. They come to that desk, they search for their rhyming word, and uh, when all of them know their answer, I clean the little cards, nobody can see them anymore, and they mingle in space, meeting one another, and one asks, where do you go that rhymes with pool? The other thinks for a while and says, school. And then this person reads, what do you do with paper that rhymes with nut? Cut. Well done. Now the crucial moment. They take the card. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> they are somewhere in my box, but it's far from my hand. Uh, they swap the cards. And now the first one goes with the second riddle and the second player goes with the first riddle. They contact a different person with a different riddle, but they are experts because they already know the answer. It's a really very beneficial activity because they concentrate on those riddles, forgetting they are producing that foreign language which is very positive uh, and especially in young learners classes. So as soon as your children can read, you can play this game. But I know a lot of ways how to replace the text and I play this mingling and swapping game with many different uh, picture activities as well to promote communication. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, this is a chain game. It looks like a dominoes, but the cards are vertical. The first player gets the card with the green uh, traffic lights and the picture of boat. First, I was supposed to say you cut the two pages in cards shuffle and deal among your students. So each has one or two cards or maybe three, or if you have large classes, large groups, then two people can have one card. First, when they learn how to play the game, then you can divide them in smaller groups and they can play independently. Yeah. So the first player knows that he or she should start by the green light. So he or she says, boat. The person who's got goat uh, reads this picture because the two words rhyme and as house. The person with mouse responds and adds twig. Then pig is heard from another player, snake cake, car, star, and they play in this way. The game flies over the room among the players. Not even the teacher knows who's going to speak, whose turn is it. So if you play it with little children, then I strongly advise you to play it sitting in a circle and having the card in front of them so that you can see what they have. And if they don't know, they should react. You just indicate, oh, it's your turn. Go on. Yeah. After you train them this way, they are able to play in smaller gr groups and without your involvement, you build their autonomy. So this is a very efficient game, even for older students. It can be uh, played with words instead of pictures. So if you write this chain of words into little cards, then you can play the very same game. Uh, these are rhyming puzzles. You cut the circles in six, seven parts, uh, the middle circle as well. Then the children, um, sorry, you cut this puzzle in uh, seven shapes. You cut two or three of them and offer in one heap to a group of children. They should place those uh, central circles and then they put the cards according to which words rhyme. So in a big circle, you can see bear, pear, square, um, there, hair, chair. In small circles, you can see four words that rhyme. So 
uh, it's a bit easier for children to complete. Uh, it makes a real difference if you provide them with something to do with their hands and to name the words loudly. Then they practice the pronunciation, they practice their uh, fine motor skills, they practice um, eye and hand coordination, and they practice their thinking skills. It's all combined together. That's why I love card games and puzzles and all those manipulating games. I hope you do too. Oof, and that's all. Actually, um, now I'm going to stare into the chat and find out if you have any important questions. Have I invented all these things? Well, uh, I did many of them. I um, wrote many chants. Uh, oh, I can show you. This is a little book. It's a magic book, actually. Look, it's just an A4 piece of paper folded in this clever way and it makes a book and there are small tongue twisters together with pictures every time focused on a certain sound so i heard that there are some people from spain actually uh, i sometimes teach erasmus plus project and usually I have groups of Spanish kindergarten teachers. So that's why I know you have troubles with sh and j and ch sound. That's why I invented about six or seven chants practicing this sh, ch, j, j distinction. Uh, if there is anyone from Japan, then I know l and r sound. It's very difficult to uh, um, to say apart. That's why I've got two rhymes for L and R. People from France or uh, Italy, uh, sound. Is it easy for you to pronounce? Well, I was told it's not. So that's why I have Happy Harry has... Um, sorry, no, 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 no. Mm -mm -mm. No, it's not here. Uh, sorry, there are 50 of them. I don't remember them by heart because I've invented many more since I finished my pronunciation basket. Uh, but I really love making those little things and those little activities, card games for little children, because I know it's important and it helps them. Okay, I'm going to read more questions, yeah? How do you do the transition from individual sounds? Uh, actually, I practice uh, simultaneously. So uh, I am a strong promoter of that uh, direct method, natural approach, when teacher uh, does many things in lessons. Uh, they say, sing, speak, uh, make these books, uh, draw, color, fold the paper, um, form the clay, and the teacher um, teacher comments on on what he or she is doing, and the children are immersed into the English sounds, and that's why they learn how to think in a target language. They don't learn the target language. So that's why they are immersed in English sounds. And if I can see they have troubles with any sound, uh, for example, if I were a French teacher, then I would focus on that uh, huh sound in that little um, chant, yeah, or whatever. So I would focus my and their attention on a particular sound. So everything is connected to everything. I wouldn't do anything separately. 
every time it's a part of a lesson, it's a part of a topic. And if there is something that creates troubles in your learners, then uh, use the technique how to make it easier for them. Uh, how to fold. Okay. What does AMATE stand for? AMATE uh, is uh, Association of Methodology Teachers in the Czech Republic, which is a body of about uh, 60 special methodology specialists in the Czech Republic. And this organization um, allowed me to publish my materials under their uh, name because uh, me as a private uh, teacher trainer, I cannot uh, publish my own materials on my name. That's why they uh, allowed me to, to um, publish my pronunciation basket under their name. Okay, uh, if you, sorry, oh, so many. Do you send orders to, uh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed, but if you are interested in these materials, then on my website, <clears throat> sorry, on my website, you will find the eShop. Uh, as this, the set is downloadable, you can order from any part of the world. And we sent to Brazil, we sent to Thailand, we sent to South Africa. So uh, uh, just uh, enter the eShop order and you can pay via PayPal or uh, by a credit card, I suppose. I'm not a specialist in eShop, my husband is. I supply my eShop with ideas and he does the rest. Um, there is a contact address. If there are any problems, you can contact him by email. And uh, sorry, have you got a piece of paper? Okay, oh. I will sit like this so that you can see that and I can see you. So take a piece of paper and fold in half like this and press very carefully okay, i will wait a bit so that you can all have this shape and tell your students this shape is called a hot dog fold it's a hot dog fold yeah okay now open your hot dog turn 90 degrees and fold this way this is called a hamburger fold, a hamburger fold. Now raise one side of your hamburger and fold corner to corner and press again. Turn over and fold here. And look, you've got an accordion or a W or a sandwich, whatever is this shape called. Hold it here in the middle. Take a pair of scissors and cut, 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 cut like this. I will wait a while because now it's the most difficult moment. So if you have this shape, hold it in both hands, then flop. Can you see the cross? You find the title page and you fold all the pages behind. And wow, that's your first mini book. Isn't that fantastic? Actually, uh, the instructions how to make the mini book are a part of my pronunciation box set and uh, actually a part of any of my uh, story based sets. So, uh, okay, I'm going to study. Sorry, my eyes are.
quite okay question okay how many lessons do you have per week actually i don't teach students anymore i have just little students in summer camps uh, i am a retired teacher but i do a teacher training job and uh, now in the times of coronavirus i have about five workshops a week eight hour workshops uh, speaking to the screen and teachers trying to remember all the activities that i offer because i focus also on uh, teaching grammar without realizing they are studying grammar and we will have um, the meeting with ayatev poland next uh, may i suppose may or, or april so I have a lot of workshops with teachers via um, uh, via webinars or workshops uh, which I like more face to face. And I love traveling. So if you want to share um, my activities, you can invite me. <laughs> okay. Um, excuse me. I'm not able to read all the questions now. If if you think uh, you put uh, there um, an important question, can you type it once again so that I don't have to scroll all the way to the beginning? Where we can find your seminars, webinars? Webinars at IATE for Poland or uh, next Saturday I'm talking for Don Elta Moscow. Uh, it will be about story-based learning. And uh, if you want me to talk for any organization, just uh, let me know. Uh, with IATE for Poland, we will have story-based learning in uh, March and uh, teaching grammar in April or May, I suppose. Okay. Teaching grammar, yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Actually, there are hundreds and hundreds of activities how to teach grammar without students realizing they are learning or practicing grammar. They are just enjoying the activities in a lesson. <laughs> okay, but that's the invitation for another webinar. Yes. Beata, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, Ayata, for um, special interest group pronunciation, uh, asked me to conduct the workshop. So I did it uh, in, in August. Uh, no, I don't have any online classes because nowadays I have a feeling that the teachers only hunt for free events and i'm sorry i'm a workaholic i uh, i work for 14 hours a day and i spend a lot of money on uh, studio recordings and illustrators so i have to be paid or rewarded somehow so well i really welcome the opportunity to to earn at least some of my expenses back. I hope you understand. <laughs> Shall I say how old I am? You would be surprised. <laughs> but thank you anyway. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Agnieszka. <laughs> Can we invite you to our school, Barbara? Oh, yeah. Barbara, I suppose you are from the Czech Republic. I remember your name from Facebook. Okay, I, I would gladly come. 
you can contact me. Uh, and if you want to know a few more um, uh, inspiration, then go to my uh, story-based learning Facebook site. Uh, now I uh, made a few videos for those teachers who uh, got stuck in online teaching to little beginners. And uh, unfortunately, there are many videos with a lot of translation. And I don't like translation at all. The children should be immersed in the target language. So that's why I started to make videos for little children. Sorry, they are not perfect. They are technically awful. But at least something. And as far as I have some feedback, then the children quite like them. You can watch them, you can use them, and please let me know. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope you uh, got some inspiration from me, and maybe you will try some activity with your learners. I showed you the way how you can do it. So thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. For the and uh, see you soon. Uh, please don't forget to visit the Sylvia's uh, website, but also take a look at uh, Aitafu uh, Poland website simply to uh, get some uh, current information about what is going on at uh, ELT in Poland and around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sylvia. It's been a pleasure. And uh, see you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. You should be sent um, uh, certificates automatically um, by email when you finish this, the, the, um, the webinar. However, when you close the window, when you finish the webinar, um, there should be a, um, a website displaying which uh, includes the certificates as well. If those two ways fail, please go um, visit and um, www.iatefl.org.pl slash webinars. Thank you much, guys, and uh, all the best to you. Good night.